Hey everyone, this is Nitro. With it being Monday, welcome to another installment of Nitro Setup. Now, because next week I'm going to be doing the fully detailed one covering all my characters, you know, where I put my rune stones and all my sets of gear, which should be over 15 sets by now. Um, this one should be fairly brief. I don't particularly want to go over my characters in detail, given I will be doing that next week, and that video should be ridiculously long. So I'll just briefly cover what's been happening with my account as I'm preparing for Summit Arena. So first things first, as always, I should talk about the dragon farming results. And last week was actually pretty good um, in terms of the number of SSRs I got. On Monday, I got yet another Seal Guardian. As you all know, I already have three level 50 ones. I guess I'm building a fourth one up just because I keep getting them. You know, it doesn't hurt to have more of them. If nothing else, it means I can just throw it on another character that I might use for, let's say, guild battles, and I don't have to move equipment anymore. So that's probably what will end up happening. The other thing, of course, is if I don't, if I find that I actually don't end up needing this piece of equipment, I can always, you know, turn it back, alchemy it down, and then I'll get all my gold back, and it, ore and all that good stuff. So there is that. So Monday got a Steel Guardian from the joint battle. Next was on Wednesday, which was actually a really good day. I did, only did three dragon runs, but I picked up three SSRs, and it's I was actually the very first Charon that I got. So I now have yet another item to build up to level 50. Well, it just means that my, I guess, equipment upgrade, the lack of epic martial spirits continues. You know, I'll definitely be upgrading this Charon, but it's a matter of when. It's not really exactly a top priority, in my opinion. Like, it's a very, very nice piece of equipment for PvE, right? Because since it can increase the amount of damage you do to enemies, but Given I have basically all current PvE content cleared, I don't need it. So, but I will definitely be upgrading it because I know in the future they'll release more content, harder fights, and you'll definitely need the Charon for additional damage then. So other than Charon, you know, picked up yet another copy of a Twilight Helmet so I can continue to upgrade Zerida's current Twilight Helmet, which I think is level 30. So this brought it to level 40. And then I got a Gargoyle Jacket. So not a bad item, you know, uh, I do have a, I'm still trying to build up two different gargoyle jackets right now. I think I have one on Juggler and then one on my Shuri since I don't have the last strikes. So that's, so you know, getting another one always helps. That's pretty much it, you know, because in fact, I could even use three of these, can't I, right? For example, another one for Ulti Muller, who can be a flying tank with the gargoyle jacket. So there you go. Thursday though, six runs and I didn't get an SSR. So that kind of sucked. Friday, I wrote down I only did one run. I'm not quite sure if that's accurate. Oh, I think I know why it's accurate. Yes, sorry, it is accurate. I only did one run because Friday, I think, was the day where I spent my time finishing up the Trails in Time uh, second chapter. Nightmare Arena. So because that took several attempts, I didn't really do any dragon runs as a result. So one run on Friday and I think to hit 300, I'm not even sure if I even hit 300 uh, stamina used in the time riff as a result. Nonetheless, did not get any SSRs from that one run, but I did get a Dark Crown from the world event. So. I almost have a second level 50 Dark Crown. I think it's now at level 40. Not really a... <clears throat> excuse me. Not really a bad thing because, well, I don't really have to commit runestones into upgrading a Dark Crown. Or sorry, not runestones, Epic Martial Spirits. So, always a nice thing. You know, if I can get one more Dark Crown, I'll have two level 50 ones and then I can just give it to whoever. Because I'm actually really lacking in uh, headgear for my characters right now. So while Dark Crown may not be an ideal SSR, it is one, so I can equip it. 
Saturday, six runs, no SSRs. And then fr finally, on Sunday, I did 30 runs, got three SSRs, which was nice. So that was like, what, one in 10 runs in general? Unfortunately, they were all garbage. So 300 ore. A last night, a broken star, a Nighthawk. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So all in all, you can think of this as what? 3 runs, 6 runs, uh, 9, 10, 11, 11 plus 5, 16 plus 3, 19, 19 plus 3, 22, 22 plus 3, 25, 30, so 30, 60. So in total, you can think of this as 62 attempts to get SSRs, right? Minus the joint battles. And in those 62 attempts, I got three here, I got six. So yeah, a rate of around one in 10, not counting world events or joint battles. So there we go. Continuing to farm for SSRs, you know, at least I got one new one, the Charon. Although, <sighs> the Extreme Magic Bow, the Ragnarok, the Yggdrasil branch, they all continue to avoid me. So with that covered, let's jump back into the game. So as I already mentioned, right, I'm still missing those core SSR weapons that I'm still looking for. Yggdrasil branch, Extreme Magic Bow, and Ragnarok. Still missing a bunch of other ones, of course, like the Blue Star, the Spirit Griever, the Red Moon, which I actually do kind of want, but the, for the rest, you can kind of not have them and still be okay, you know? So it is what it is. Armors. Continuing to not have the last rites, of course, the Bloodline Magic Armor or the Aeolus' Battle Armor. So missing a bunch of the good ones here, too. Demon Lizard Skin is also considered pretty good, but and I still don't have that one either. But, you know, you can work without them, in my opinion. That's the thing. Although, last rites, having what, at least one makes a big difference. Yeah. Helmets. Well, Tenyo's Headdress, Odin's Battle Helm. Those are the two that I'm missing now, since I did pick up the Charon. So, down to two SSR helmets that I'm missing, which is a very good thing. Uh, I would like to get a Tenyo's headdress, but for at least the hit point increase, right? But if I don't get it, that's fine too. And finally, accessories. The only one that I really, really, truly want right now is Blood Pact, because I can then throw this onto Listelle. But. You know, not having it is fine. It, just like I would love to get an Apex Boots if I can, but not having it is okay too. So there's... Given that you can only get one SSR per week, pretty much, we'll see what I get. It is coming to the new month soon, right? On Thursday. So in the new month, I can get one from the store as well. Because there is that monthly SSR... Uh, SSR accessory gift box. So the only question is whether I should grab this one right away or wait a little bit because if you wait a little bit when the I think two weeks after the Bracer Force ends you can get uh, the Bracer Emblem in its alternate form. Right? So what I may do is I may actually wait for two weeks before I get that SSR accessory box. You know, there It's a small chance to get the equivalent of the Bracer Emblem, but it's not like I'm exactly desperate for SSR accessories right now anyways. So I'll probably end up doing that. Wait two weeks, so around mid-August, right? August. 15th or so, I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, would be when I get that accessory box. You can see I'm also saving up a lot of honor points, and it's for that very reason as well. I don't plan to purchase any of these random accessory gift boxes until the Bracer, uh, the Bracer Emblem equivalent is 
available for, you know, randomly getting. So, bunch of SSR accessories that I hope to get, but I will wait and be patient. Now, in terms of shard farming, well, because the event started where we're getting 18 runs of Gate of Fate per day for two weeks due to the legendary gate, I'm currently doing a lot of farming of various characters. Right now, I'm doing three of Zerida, three of Landius, four of Tieris. So, Zerida, uh, Landius, Tieris. I'm also doing four Liana, and then I have five runs left after that because you're getting 18 runs. Three, three, four, four adds up to 14. Or sorry, three, three, four, four. Sorry, so there's four more runs. And those last four runs, what I'm doing is I'm clearing out the Gate of Fates that I've never done. And I'll also mix that in with some runs on Juggler because my goal is just to get Juggler to four stars. I don't plan to have him get to five stars anytime soon. Five star Juggler would be nice to have, but I just know it's not happening anytime soon. So yeah, with that, I am going to have at least all of my Gate of Fate done for all my other characters and also have Juggler close to his four stars. So by next week, which would be August 5th, I actually won't be complete yet. I won't be completely ready for uh, Summit Arena. But yeah, all of this is just work in progress, right? As Summit Arena continues, my party will be more and more finalized. I don't think I'll ever have my 15 characters absolutely finalized, because that's really only possible if you whale up. But it should be in a solid position. Oh, I should also mention, the four Liana shards that I mentioned about, I'm actually putting into Elwyn. I'm gambling a little bit. What I plan to do is I'm going to be drawing for one more SSR on the banners that are happening this week, right? Until the 7th. And what I'm hoping to get is another copy of Landius or Listel to make it easier for me to raise up their levels. By doing so, as long as I can uh, SSR, I will end up with a CP token. So I'm going to use that CP token to trade for 60 Liana shards. And the other CP token, of course, if I have to, I'll trade it to get Listel. So hopefully I'll end up with a 4-star Listel, right? Hopefully a 5-star Landius and 60 Liana shards. That's the goal. So that pretty much covers up my current plans. You know, I'm saving up some Trinity vouchers for my draw, which should happen uh, near the end of, well, close to August 7th. So I'll probably record that draw then. Other than that, in terms of characters and equipment, I'm not going to go over any of that stuff right now because it's I'm still very much in transitional phase right now. And if I'm going to go over all of that in detail next week, shouldn't even bother. But there's just been really over the past week, right? You saw the SSRs that I got. So there's just really been minor changes, right? Like as, as I mentioned, Twilight Helmet went from level 30 to 40. But this Twilight Helmet in the first place is not really Zerida's final gear. Um, so really just a bunch of minor changes like that. In terms of bonds, just briefly, Zerida finally got her confession. So you can see right there, because I, I maxed out her heart bond. Just today, in fact. So she's actually the very first female character I have maxed out on the heart bond. None of my other female characters have their heart bond maxed yet. You know, Lana is close at level seven, but not quite. Uh, Liana is the one I'm currently working on, but she's all the way down at level 3 because of the lack of Fire of Origin materials. Um, yeah. Luna is actually at level 6, but she also needs Fire of Origin materials, which is currently my limiting factor because I actually forgot to do the Phoenix run last week. So on the 21st, I forgot to do my Phoenix run. Plus, that's cost, that actually did cost me 
uh, 24 of these fires of origins, as well as some uh, fire of divinity. But the more limiting factor for me what, what is the lack of the fire of origin. So that set me back quite a bit in terms of bond upgrades. So it just shows how important doing your daily eternal temple is. You know, if you forget it once, you fall far behind, especially if it is if it is the Phoenix one, because that only happens once a week, and you get double the amount of materials for it. Okay, what's next? Um, yeah, so it's just been incremental bond upgrades. You know, as I do my eternal temples, upgrade some bonds, and as I do my dailies and so on, I get some of these bursting heart keys to upgrade character bonds. So I'll go over all of that in great detail next week though. And last but not least will be the training ground, which once again I'll cover in great detail next week. Uh, briefly though, by the end of this week I should have flyers at least at the 14-14-14 at the level on the elite training. The core training there, which means it'll be 34%, 34%, 34%, 34%. So infantry and flyers will be basically done. Cavalry and lancers are actually both starting to get there as well. They're rapidly approaching that 14, 14, 14 stage. My limiting factor in troop has been gold. After I went broke trying to get good enchants on Landius, I've been struggling to rebuild my gold reserve so I can actually do upgrades here. You know, because just as an example, if I decide to upgrade this a few times, right, each upgrade increases in cost pretty exponentially. So I go broke after like you know three or four upgrades, just like that. But nonetheless, training grounds are making progress. Very good progress, in fact. For example, let me just upgrade the flyer ground now. So I, if I do the first upgrade, that was 170,000. Second upgrade, 200,000. Third upgrade, 240,000, right? So right there, that ate up, jeez. Basically, 600,000 gold with three upgrades. But that did bring my flyer training ground to the 14, 14, 14 stage. So there you go. All I have left to do is the uh, the advanced ones, the advanced defense, advanced survival. And once I get those up to, four, to level 15, I've pretty much done all of my flyer upgrades in terms of using gold items. It's SSR items from here on out. So yeah, in terms of my training ground, I'm more or less ready for PvP. Or at least, I think I'm ready for PvP. Um, Assassin one continues to be pretty far behind in terms of upgrading the hit points of my soldiers and that's why I don't really have any assassins in my party right now. I mean, because even Zerida, I'm currently using Hellfire Archers which fall into the Holy Demon category as opposed to let's say Mist Dancers or Bandits or whatever soldier, other soldiers that she has access to. And the reason for that is, again, the training ground issue. So once, if, slash once, the Archer and Assassin training ground is fully upgraded so that the soldiers here also have a bit more survivability, that's when I'll start using Archers and Assassin soldiers. Finally, Holy and Demon training ground, rapidly reaching the 14, 14, 14 stage as well. I just need a bit more of these gold books and this one can be upgraded to 14 as well. And then at that point, it would just be the advanced training once again, which for this branch is at level 13. Other than that, I think the main thing is I am I almost have enough devout gloves to bring my Royal Calvary, which are used primarily by Landius, to level 10. So two more of these devout gloves. And then I still, of course, with that said, I still have a bunch of upgrades to do in terms of increasing the survivability of my Royal Cavalry. Because their hit points and their defense and magic defense stats are still lower than the 34% that the other training grounds offer. I'm just going to 
send off another expedition in the meantime. Okay, so with all that said, this is pretty much my current status. You know? I'm rapidly get gear as I said. I'm just rapidly gearing up for Summit Arena, bringing my uh, training grounds to a state where it's truly usable for Summit, which I think is with 34% stat boost for everything. You know, if I end up needing more, I'll worry about it then, because that means I would start having to use SSR items to upgrade these techs. So I'm a little bit. Uh, worried about that. It's quite finicky. The biggest flaw I see in my training grounds is actually the Holy and Demon training ground because the units that I most frequently use, for example, Zealots, are only level 7 and they need burning straps. Okay. Uh, how far archers could be upgraded, but I don't know if I'm going to use them long term. That's why I've been holding off on any further upgrades once they've hit level 7. It. And no, the reason I like to bring uh, soldiers up to level 7 is because of the cost. At level 5, it costs 2 items to bring it up to level 6. And then I think from level 6 to level 7, it's just 3 more items. So that's in total 5 of each item, right? To bring it up to level 8, it uses an additional 5. To bring it up to level 9, I think was 7 of each. And then level 10 requires 9 of each. So the cost scales pretty exponentially. And thus, bringing soldiers up to level 7 is easy, but 8, 9, 10 is where you've got to start debating the pros and cons of it. So in my case, for example, even Shrine Maidens are still at level 9. And this is one finicky aspect of it. I'm not too worried about upgrading Shrine Maidens further in large part because they need to be 100 hit, percent hit points to do the 75% damage reduction. and. Generally speaking, in PvP, you're going to get hit by AoE Blast before someone melee attacks your healer, or it's going to be near the end stages where you get a lot of stat boosts, right? Plus attack. So, and then the plus attack should overwhelm the Shrine Maidens anyways. So in both of those cases, there's no real reason to raise the Shrine Maidens up to level 10 as a result. The one that I do want to raise, but I'm lacking resources in general, is Sorceresses. Because once again, they all use burn. It's just crazy. Like almost all the units here seem to use burning straps. Sorceresses, right? Shrine maidens. Uh, Hellfire archers don't, but I think even zealots use burning straps. So that's three units in one single branch that need burning straps, and so I'm critically short on them as a result. All right. So that's everything for this video. Uh, that's my current status, as I said, just gearing up for Summit Arena, upgrading everything incrementally, and we'll see how it goes next week. You know, the results of all these upgrades so far. As I said, I won't have all my gear leveled up by next week. For example, you know, items that won't be upgraded include things like Sharon, right? King's Crown, which I picked up uh, last week, right? And even this one, Najord's Feathered Crown because I realize I need to upgrade one to level 10. But once again, it's a level 20. So this right there here is three Epic Martial Spirits, six Epic Martial Spirits, nine Epic Martial Spirits that I need for these three items. And there's a bunch of other equipment that I need to upgrade. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. And on that note, Nitro out.